My name is Sophie Buckmuller. And I'm Leo Zogra. We are the graduate curatorial assistants for the launch exhibition. It was a pleasure and a privilege for Sophie and me to organize this show. This exhibition of work by MFA and MDES graduates from the SAAC Class of 2020 represents a taking off point. A launch, if you will, into the future. We have seen these artists and designers demonstrate creative energy during this time of unprecedented upheaval and uncertainty. Not all of the artwork in this exhibition is directly in conversation with the crises we are currently facing, though these works are all important in shaping our present moment. The launch exhibition, and by extension this video tour, brings together members of our community to reaffirm the importance of our creative practices, catalyzing an experience larger than a single voice, fostering a sense of intimacy, of interconnectedness. By including artists and organizers' voices, we hope to offer intimate insight into their practices. This video tour offers an additional perspective to the physical show. My works for launch combine a variety of digital fabrication and handcrafting techniques. These processes layer on top of each other and end up creating physically digital or digitally physical works. I start with 3D scanning from live bonsai, then CAD modeling the scans, 3D printing the models, and finally resin casting and reassembling the prints. For me, the process of working between digital and physical realms creates work that exists in both spaces. In reflecting on what we had to forgo with this show given health and safety restrictions, we acutely felt the absence of an opening, a celebratory gathering where visitors and artists mingle and connect. The launch video tour emulates some of these informal conversations while offering a more contemplative look at the show than what one normally experiences at a crowded opening. Housing and Stays was supposed to be an interactive installation with the components of sound, neon, and more groups to depict the typical housing phenomenon in Hong Kong, where I call home. Due to the pandemic, under the updated gallery parameters with restrictions, I had to make adjustment to it. There is no sound, no neon, no interaction and there is only one group, isolated. The audience were supposed to be invited to have a seat to experience the work while they are sitting. I left only two chairs there as a metaphor of social distancing, but neither of them are in a functional position. One is upside down, one is folded. They both are not meant to be interactive anymore. I came into the production of this exhibition in the middle of the process. After jumping into planning, I came to reflect on myself and my personal practice as an artist and community organizer. My meditations on the exhibition led me to uncover two orbiting needs within myself as a creative and collaborator. There's the need to discover what art making and exhibitions look like in the current moment and the need to reflect on art as a vehicle for community building. We as organizers attempt to send these orbiting planets into an eclipse to create a moment in which the two exist in unison. While I was making this piece, I really realized how big a role uh, patience has to play in my practice since I'm still learning 
so much about the logistical issues of working with sound. Uh, there was so much troubleshooting, and without a proper studio setup, all these gangly wires and pieces were sprawled across my cramped living space, so the process of making it revealed um, these unexpected and unanticipated issues that I could either get frustrated by or accept and adapt um, the piece. My practice poses questions about the representation of nature through natural materials. Since 2013, I have been producing a process-based material project called Something to Something. For this project, um, the relationships between objects in the cycle of creation and destruction is represented by utilizing materials such as ground stone and branch ashes in painting installations. Stones pulverized into powder become a part of a uh, painting of the stone, so both the material and imagery are a part of nature. Recently, I have been focusing on the meaning of space. I have collected materials near the demilitarized zones between North and South Korea. In this work, I tried to make a composition that seemed harmonious and not harmonious. I wanted to make it look abstract and not abstract. In developing the layout of the show, my decisions were guided by the idiosyncrasies of the gallery space, the physical needs of the individual works, and an intuition of how different pieces could complement or elevate each other. Sometimes this intuition was guided by the work's conceptual themes, in other instances I drew from the visual aesthetics of the piece. Bursting Creek Lane is primarily made up of a wood stud frame, traditionally found in the construction of suburban households in the United States. With no visible screws in the piece, the frame appears to be held together by the tension between the picture-perfect interiors. The piece speaks to the emotional and sexual repressions which take place in the pursuit of projecting an ideal, heteronormative lifestyle. The piece was inspired by summer spent in the Connecticut and New York suburbs with my extended American family. Having grown up in London, I was always quite uncomfortable and completely perplexed by the golden retriever owning, lawn mowing, sports playing, smiling suburban families. The copy-paste lifestyles made me desperate to find out their secret quirks, kinks, and idiosyncrasies. Vito Conchi explains that public bodies lead private lives. As an artist, I am drawn to the private fears, tensions, anxieties, and desires brewing beneath the facade of controlled public authority. In my work, I appropriate the rules and aesthetics of these public personas to allow the absurd, the chaotic, and the humorous tendencies to reveal themselves. I choose color provokes a sense of fantasy, reminding people of brief moments when life felt like a movie or drama. My filter palette indicates the unknown, something outside of ordinary life. Specifically, I bring colors from the vibes of city pop, a synth-laden subset of 80s Japanese pop music and related videos into my paintings. I capture intimate scenes romantic or heartbreaking moments with partner and their posters and environments mixed feelings of emptiness isolation and ennui from urban life the repetition of reflective spaces and screens in my works creates some narrative that are open-ended and incomplete the picture plane opens outward 
toward the viewer, inviting them into awareness between space where the painting is a stage and they are the theater. The goal of my painting is to depict the unreal and arcane quality in mundane existence. I think the most important process of me, I think it's, it's just about the technique. Uh, I, was use the, I was using the Max MSP to make the visualizations, uh, sound work. Um, in my work, the key thing is about sound. Um, the visualizations just uh, support my sound. I was thinking about uh, make my work give the audience more and more immerse, immerse feeling, immersive feelings. And in my works, I try to um, put my my sound transfer to the physical uh, feelings, and people can feel it, feel people can feel it out. So it's very important for me. Throughout the curatorial process, we kept running into the question, what can we do with the circumstances we are presented with? The artists in this show really embrace that charge. And we hope, from our end as organizers, we were successful in doing the same.